Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Linda. If you're just tuning in for the first time, you're welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, you're so much loved. Here on this channel, I share videos about sewing, pattern drafting, and everything fashion. So on today's tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to stitch these cargo joggers we drafted the last time. If this seems like what you're interested in, you might definitely want to hit the subscribe button and let's start. So guys, here are my patterns from the last video. And as you can see, I've attached the pocket and then I'm just going to close it on the down part like this for each one. So I'm just going to flip this and you see how it is. I'm already going to have to attach the sides of the pocket, the where the place for the opening. And this is how it looks like. Then I'm going to be doing the same thing for the opposite side as well. So after I'm done with that, I'll just go ahead and attach the zipper fly and then the zipper. Now I am done with the pocket, the side pocket, it's time to attach the fly and the zipper of course. And now the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and take away one part of the fly and then align the other one with the trouser like this. So I'm just going to stitch it at this point all the way down and also I'll go ahead and flip it over and top stitch on it. Make sure you top stitch on it, okay? So the next thing I'll be doing after that is just go ahead and place my zipper. After I was done with this part of the fly, I'll just go ahead and attach my zipper on it like so. And for the zipper, I'll be placing it wrong side upwards. I'll just go ahead and zoom it for you guys to understand. So the wrong side is supposed to be facing you. And then the right side is supposed to be on the flap. Just go ahead and stitch it like this on top of the flap, like so. On the, the outer part, not the one close to you. I mean the one that's out, that's not facing you. The one that is outside on the flap itself, okay? After I was done stitching it, I'll just go ahead and turn it this way to face down. And then I'll bring the other part of the flap and then place it underneath the first one to align with the first one making sure it's facing right side to right side with each other and then i'll just go ahead and hold it in place while i bring the other part of the trouser pattern okay the other front piece i'll just go ahead and place the front piece on top of it like this so this would mean that the zipper is sandwiched in between the trouser pattern and the fly so the one underneath is the fly and the one above it is the trouser pattern with the zipper in between so i'll just go ahead and stitch it and then this is how it will look like after i was done so now i've gone ahead to stitch it you can see how it's looking like it's looking all nice after i was done with the zipper the next thing i did was to turn it right side facing up so that i could be able to work on the rest of the crouch area okay for the crouch i'll just go ahead and also flip this part like this to align the rest of the crouch this is what it's going to look like when you align the crouch together and then I'll go ahead and stitch it at 0 0.5 inches along the line like this. So this is what it looks like after I was done stitching the rest of the crouch for the front piece. And then the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and close this part of the zipper. I'm going to be stitching a curved line like this from this point all the way to the waistline like I am pointing. While you are stitching that, ensure that this part is wide open, separated from each other, so that the boot of the flap will be facing their opposite ways before running a curved stitch like I am pointing. So guys, now that I was done with the front piece, the next thing I did was to go ahead and place the back piece on it, right side to right side facing each other. So I went ahead to stitch the back piece first of all. As you can see, I've already included my darts. I'm still going to loosen up the crouch for the back piece after I was done stitching the side. I'll be doing that by stitching this part like this at one inch all the way down on both sides so that I'll be able to insert my cargo pockets on both sides of the trouser. This is how it looks like after I was done stitching the both sides and I just went ahead to turn it inside out for you guys to see. Next I'll be working on the pockets. Now for the pockets as I have, I'll just go ahead and double fold the top of the pocket like this and then stitch it on the machine. So I am done stitching the four pockets for the cargo pockets and then the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to insert these locks where the straps will be passing through. So I'll just go ahead and attach it one after the other on them. For that I'll be using a piece of fabric that is about 3 inches wide. And then this is how it's going to look like after I was done attaching them. So I'll be attaching them right away. So for that I'll be measuring 4 inches to 3.5 inches from the top of the pocket and then I'll mark it down. This is where I'm going to be stopping after I'm done attaching the long strap. So now I'll get the midpoint to know the center in which I want to place the straps. You can go ahead and use about 2 inches to 2.5 inches for the wideness of your strap and then make sure that it's long enough to fold over. If you don't understand what I am doing, just pay attention and watch carefully. 
when you're about stitching make sure to stop at this point like i mentioned initially just go ahead and make sure that your stitches are stopping at that point where i marked my chalk line When stitching, make sure to stitch on one side of the strap first of all, then insert your locks and then stitch the remaining part of the side after you have done folding over. Please ignore the part where I stitched the both sides, I'm not supposed to do it that way, but I'm still going to repeat the process for you guys to understand. The reason why I suggested that you stitch one side first of all is because when you are done stitching the both sides, you find it difficult to insert the rest of the straps in between the stitches. And by making such a mistake, you find it difficult to stitch on it while you have inserted your locks already. So I'll just go ahead and repeat the same process for you guys to understand. Like I said initially, after you are done inserting your lock, just go ahead and fold the remaining side of the strap and then stitch it all the way down. So this is how it looks like after I was done. It's even looking way more neater than the first one. So I've done the same thing for the rest of the pockets and then I'll just go ahead and trim the sides to beautify the shape of the pockets. I guess that's part of the reason why it's called a cargo pocket. After that, the next thing I did was to work on the pocket cover. I simply went ahead to remove half of an inch which seems like it's an excess fabric. So now the next thing I'll be doing is just to go ahead and mark it out and curve it the way I want it to look like, the shape I want it to look like. Of course I'm going to be attaching this strap again on the pocket cover and that's why I've stitched a long strap of fabric that's long enough to form a belt for it. So after I was done with that, I went ahead to split the pocket covers into two and I'm just going to use the top one to form a shape which I wanted to have. But if you want, you can go ahead and leave it boxy or in a rectangular form as it was. So guys, the next thing I'll be doing is just to go ahead and insert this strap in between the slits, leaving the rough edge inwards. So the rough edge is going to be inside because I'm going to be stitching that. So let me just go ahead and arrange it like this and pin it down first of all. Remember to use your pins before stitching this so that the straps won't move away from the midpoint. So just go ahead and follow the lines and stitch it down. After I was done with that, I went ahead to trim the sides, the rough edges and then also I turned it inside out and this is what it looks like after I was done. So next now just go ahead and top stitch on it as well. So after I was on top stitching, this is what I have. So this is the four of them for the four pockets. And next I'll be illustrating how you guys can stitch it as one pocket. So guys, this is what I have for the whole of the four pockets. I'll be cutting out a long strip of fabric that's about three inches wide. And then I'm going to be using that to stitch all around the pockets, first of all. To do that, I'll be placing my pocket this way. Then I'll go ahead and stitch the corners together like this all the way around with a long strip of fabric right side to right side facing each other and I'll also fold the edge like this so that I will tuck in the rough edges before stitching it on the machine so now this is what I have after I was done stitching it like I said and the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and turn it over on the right side and then I'll be top stitching all around the stitch corners as well now I am done stop stitching on the four of the pockets and the next thing I've been doing right now is just to go ahead and bring out my trouser and then I'll be inserting the pockets on the sides. You can see that I've loosened out my back crouch which I stitched together initially. I loosened it out because I want to have enough space to work on while I was stitching my cargo pocket on the sides. Now the next thing I'll be doing is just to take my tape rule and I'll go down by 1.5 inch at this point. I'll be measuring 1.5 inch downwards at those points and then I'll mark it with my chalk line. This is the point where I'll be fixing one of my pockets. 
the pocket is going to start below this line at about half of an inch so i'll be measuring half of an inch downwards from that line and then that's where i'll be placing the first pocket making sure that it's in between these lines and then the next thing i'm going to do is just to go ahead and fold it by half of an inch inwards like this and then stitch it on the lines which i have marked just like this for the lines i'll be measuring what i have around the pocket and then i'm going to divide that into two equal half and allocate it on both sides of the lines so for that i have about seven inches in total and then for the length i'll also go ahead and mark seven inches as well and then i'll finish it off by connecting the lines into a square i also didn't forget to give it the same shape i gave below the pockets and whatever i do for this part is what i'll do for all other pockets as well so guys i am done with the pockets and this is how it look, it's looking like you can see how open it is so i'm just going to reduce the opening by folding the corners at the top like this i'm going to be top stitching on it shortly so i'm just going to top stitch on it a little bit and then i'll do the same thing for the other side as well this is what i have after i was done with everything and then it's time for me to fix the pocket covers which i already stitched to fix the pocket covers i'm going to be placing the right side on the right side of the trouser and then stitch on it by half of an inch and then make sure you are stitching on that line and after you are done stitching you're just going to flip it over and also top stitch on it like this so i am done stitching the covers for the four of the pocket it's time to go ahead and complete the rest of my trouser this part right here is for the right leg and then this other part is for the left leg so last but not the least i'll go ahead and fold my trouser into two equal half so that i could be able to stitch the back crotch together so I'll be stitching by half of an inch all the way from the down part like this. And then this is what I have after I was done stitching the back. The next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and stitch the middle which is the inseam. I'll go ahead and stitch them together and also I'll go ahead and hem the ankle and insert my elastic band. The last thing I'll be doing is to fix the band. I'm going to have to cut the pieces for the band. So I'm going to have four for the back which is two on both sides and four for the front piece as well. But if you wish you can go ahead and cut your band in one long strip and then measure the waistline to insert it i'll be arranging my band pieces like this both for the front and the back just to be able to have one long strip of band and then i'll add extra length at the end for my bottom i'll also go ahead and attach this on my band and this is the final look if you are yet to subscribe kindly hit the subscribe button and also tap on the notification bell i'll see you guys in my next video